stocking at Christmas Open my presents and I'd be back But the last time I played Father Christmas I stood outside a department store A gang of kids came over and mugged me And knocked my reindeer to the floor He said, Father Christmas, give us some money Don't mess around with those silly toys of death. Those are just nicknames. He's a cream puff. And uh, I did better than Obama. Remember that Bergdahl trade? He had to give up the whole ISIS all-star team. Mm. And what did Brittany do anyway? What'd she do? Travel with a little bit of hemp? Hemp is very American. Uh, hey, I bet you didn't know. Declaration of Independence was written with a vape pen. <laughs> True story! <laughs> Jerome Grodin, he was standing outside in front of the bus terminal, poking people with his thing. I, I was just trying to get their attention. What for? To, 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 to save them. It all started last year. The worst winter on record. And people refused to be aware. Aware of what? It's the beginning of the next great ice age. Hey, be careful with those. They're documented proofs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some in ice age. It's, it's climate change. The, 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 the change of the climates, the, the, the shifting of the axis, change of the climate, the cooling of the oceans. You put all of that in the state. Name, your address, yeah. which oceans are cooling. <laughs> Did you know that the perimeter of the polar ice cap has been increasing at a rate of 46 feet per year since 1900? Yes, I did. <laughs> every day to hear my stilettos click on those marble floors and yet know that I deserve to be in that room just as much as anybody else. Sir, case in point, as you pointed out, the this stunning is crazy. at the southern border as captured by We've our got Fox News five to six million people now. More than the population of Ireland in, in two years. Of the border patrol reporting that over 16,000 people all have getting government benefit as soon as they arrive. The last 48 hours, an average of 8,000 people every single day. And with 5,000 migrants already in custody in the city of El Paso, well, they've done what they think they should do, which is begin a mass street yeah, release Yeah, they're all lighting fires. Great. The border patrol is so overwhelmed. Oh. Let me take you inside the numbers. They are There's the climate change, anti-pollution people. Which was a bit of a rise, frankly, compared to, say, 2017, when the numbers were right around 300,000. Look at the From under half a million and to almost two and a half million. million. But to hear the White House tell uh, them, no problem. Well, there's not much to fret over because they've got a plan. Right. So the team has been working very hard to ensure that uh, we sure have, they have steps pajama to, boy. to manage 
the expiration of Title 42 and to put in place a process that will be orderly and The hack and left over and from Obama's administration. So we can protect our national security concerns. Sure we can. Hey, Tom, Hill, the way you view it is, okay, what are the benefits and what are the drawbacks? And it seems like our medical establishment never wanted to be honest with people uh, about the potential drawbacks. And so you showed a clip yes, from Dr. Thanks. Latipo down here in Florida in the analysis that he's done with people, particularly young men who've taken the mRNA shots. We, of course, had witnesses talk about their experience. And how are we in a situation? Yes, Florida, we banned vaccine passports almost two years ago. We banned uh, the shot mandates for jobs and saved a lot of people's jobs. Nevertheless, throughout our country, you still have hundreds of universities in other states that are still mandating these boosters on these college kids. When any type of cost-benefit analysis would say the benefit from them taking the shot, as you, as you alluded to, it doesn't prevent them from getting infected or spreading it anyways, the benefit is minuscule, uh, but as Joe Latipo and other studies have shown, you know, there is a risk for doing it. So yeah. why can't our medical establishment acknowledge that? Why the deception? Why have they continued to do this for two years? Whoa, 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 put on the brakes, put on the brakes. Welcome, welcome, boys and girls, children of all ages, hoofties, poofties, bun night effers, right and left wing wackos, woodchucks, and chuckettes, kings and queens of the Northeast Kingdom to another version of Bitch News to Us. And we're going to, we, hopefully, I'm going to try and put together some more uh, free video that we can use on the green screen so we won't get stomped and stifled for running a 40-year-old BBC documentary and got bounced off YouTube like last time. Yeah, I saw that. I was, uh, I was surprised. What the hell, man? I'm sure the BBC would really object to that, right, Philo? Oh, I, I can see them now. They're frothing at their tea. Well, you know, <laughs> hey, I, I was thinking of this. Now that we got, we got permission to run that, uh, that documentary, right? Yeah. Uh, what's it, died suddenly? Yep. I, we I could, put we it could on. run that on the green screen. Yep. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll give that a try. I'll put it on for the when you get back. I'll, I'll put it on for the next year, your next show, which will be two, three weeks. Awesome. Awesome. I, we could not do the show without Philo, the station, the boss, everybody. But Philo pulls the <laughs> Philo pulls the weight. Anyways, who are we? Where are we? What are we doing here? Like Admiral Stockdale said, who am I? What am I doing here? You're watching It's New to Us. We're It's New to Us. <laughs> We're new for its oldest TV news, which is new. Hey, new brown cow, as the locals say. The local woodchucks. This is that documentary, Rumble, Died Suddenly. It's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it is unbelievable. And, Steve, uh, you want to see the content? Uh, Steve, content. turn your microphone in, into yourself. Pardon me? Turn your microphone into you. It's facing the wrong way. All right, yeah, try to do this without upsetting the apple cart. Here we go. How's that? That's better. I can barely hear you, too. I, I'm, I'm right here. Yeah, okay. Yep, see, he's in the booth. Wave to everybody. <laughs> you can see his. Uh, you can see Terry's videos on YouTube. I'm seeing at, a uh, fair ter catch. <laughs> at Terry DeFazio. <laughs> just go to YouTube, punch in Terry DeFazio, and you'll see his drum videos. He just posted one this week. It's, uh, it's, it's good. It's, oh, they all are. Anyways, MarcoPoloUSA.org. Uh, and you, the corruption... We knew, we knew this guy was the most corrupt. I mean, he did stuff that would make Hillary Clinton blush. And that's not easy on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and are you mad all the time? I mean, really mad? Oh, boy. Yeah. Are you mad? Ask your doctor about anger chucks for woodchucks and chuckettes. And uh, ask him for the Northeast Kingdom uh, uh, dose. It's uh, a lot more high-powered. Oh, and they busted... Uh, klepto boy and uh here's his girlfriend i'm sure she might have to answer for some stuff isn't she lovely finally she's 28 or something like that did you know that that, that is, is that what what's his name there the the non-binary guy that's that his <laughs> no that's not, that's not his girlfriend is it uh well he's uh what do they call him polyamorous he's uh the at the the crypto boy Oh, wrong person. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. This is Crypto Boy's girlfriend, uh, vice president of sales or some damn thing she for looks FTX. Like she's about Thirteen. And usually, get this. Usually, they let these people uh, 
they let them testify before Congress, and then they indict them, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, not this time. This guy's given to so many Democrats and has garnered so many favors. He's only been outspent by George Soros, okay, that they let him, uh, that they, they yanked him up in, in, in Bermuda, or the Bahamas, excuse me, uh, before he could testify. But anyway, side effects. You want to see side effects and uh, news on, even on uh, uh, cell phone radiation, stuff like that, go to uh, Bobby Kennedy Jr.'s website. <laughs> At childrenshealthdefense.org. And uh, this thing has saved, has saved my life. You know why? I can actually find my wife in a shopping mall with, with this. <laughs> she gets lost and she, she wanders off and she hides. Yeah, in the old, like a little kid. Yeah. In the old days, Philo would have had to go to the courtesy booth and they'd have to say, you know, hey, Mrs. Reagan, can you come to meet your husband at, at the checkout desk, please? Most, most of them won't even do that for you anymore. Uh, well, you could go and say, uh, say you have something lost. Uh, you know, I lost, I found something of somebody. So, anyways, this way, it's this workarounds. And, uh, and also, uh, Revolver.News, they've got great stuff on everything. Uh, but uh, if we, Philo was nice enough to put in a clip of the border. We're being invaded. We have 7 million people uh, just rushed the bums, rushed the border. And they're all going to, um, this is what I was telling. I was on a, uh, a phone call, a uh, community call with Bernie Sanders last night. And he was taking questions. And, of course, it was over in an hour, so I didn't get to ask mine. But uh, everybody was asking about, you know, what about Medi uh, Medicare and, 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 and how about Social Security? Are we going to keep it solvent? Well, I'll tell you what. You have 7 million new welfare bums on the can rush, bum rush the border, and they're all going to be on Medicaid. What's that going to do with Medicaid? So if you go to CIS.org, uh, it stands for... Uh, uh, Oh, I don't know. The um, Immigration Center for Immigration Studies, and uh, their designated head, uh, designated hate group by the SPLC. So you know they're good, because uh, the SPLC is a bunch of left-wing whiners. They don't like anybody. They don't like anybody. Oh, we got a couple new books this week too. I'm working my way through this one. Thanks, Philo. Whoop, we'll go back there. Yep, there you go. Yeah, presidential takedown. This guy's a black doctor and a professor, and he was on the task force. And you wouldn't believe the stuff that Fauci pulled and uh, Burks and the rest of them. Stuff that had never happened before in pandemics anywhere. It is unbelievable. And it, it looks like they did it to, to screw up the economy in an effort to take down Trump. Because let's face it, they all hated him. He must be doing something right. Thanks, Philo. And here's another one. It just came out, man. This is so fresh. The ink still, the ink's still wet. Uh, by Dr. Robert Malone. This is the guy who invented the mRNA technology that's used in this uh, so-called vaccine, and uh, which they changed the definition of the word vaccine, and uh, and uh, lies my government told me. He is uh, he's bringing forth a lot of stuff to light, and uh, I, I'm just reporting on it for those of you at Google Tube. Uh, I'm not giving medical advice or anything, but anyways, let's read a little bit to Dr. Paul Alexander here, just for the, the uh, what do you call it, the folder. In January 2020, Trump was on the fast track to an easy re-election. Well, his first two years have been stymied by uh, Speaker Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell and the Democrats. His third year had been one remarkable success. By the way, I was just telling Philo, for those of you who don't know, he didn't get one basketball player out of Russia. Trump had over 50 Americans he got returned. Uh, a lot of them without trading anybody, just by being Trump. Because, uh, you know, you never know. He would have slapped sanctions or tariffs or, you know, there's a lot of arm twisting that you can do when you're president. Uh, the United States had low, lowest unemployment and it was making strides across the globe. The rallies were well attended. He was projected to win. Then came COVID. Dr. Paul Alexander, former senior pandemic advisor for the uh, Trump and the, and the uh, pandemic evidence synthesis advisor, he he worked. He was a uh, he did work for the WHO. That's why they brought him on. And uh, let's see. 
and he talks about conspiring to overthrow him with the worst response possible to the COVID crisis. Supported by emails and documents, uh, career epidemiologists, because that was the thing, remember? Everybody that would, they would bring on, they'd say, but oh, but he's not an epidemiologist. Well, this guy was, okay? And he, he was a, a professor in a, a medical college in Canada and, uh, where they used evidence-based medicine. Imagine that, Philo? Evidence-based medicine. Never heard of such thing. We have to go by models. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go by computer models. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have this little model of a, of a battleship, right? And you put it inside a big glass jar, right? Oh, sure. That's a good oh, sure. model. <laughs> Uh, Alexander and uh, his co-author will not only show proof of a presidential takedown, but also the vendetta of the CDC and HHS against Dr. Alexander himself. From unnecessary lockdown, school closures, and mask mandates, to the dismissal of effective treatments like hydroxychloroquine, ivermectin, and vitamin D, and even threats against Trump and his family, this book is the inside story of what really happened from those uh, first reports to Trump's loss in November. Uh, Dr. Alexander is a, he teaches epidemi clinical ep epidemiologists, evidence-based medicine, and research methodology. He's a former COVID advisor, we told you that, uh, to HHS. He's a, a former assistant professor at McMaster uh, University, the one in Canada that does evidence-based medicine. He worked, was appointed in 08 at the WHO as a specialist epidemiologist at the regional office in Denmark and was assigned to projects in Russia, Turkey, Ukraine, and Poland. He was employed from 2017 to 19 in the Infectious Disease Society of America and Virginia as the Evidence Synthesis Meta-Analysis Systemic Review Guideline Development Lead Trainer. Uh, he worked for the Government of Canada as an epidemiologist for 12 years was appointed as a Canadian infield epidemiologist as part of an international Canadian funded uh, global thing about TB, HIV, and blah, blah, yada, yada. He's currently an independent uh, scientist and a consultant researcher. He is also uh, informally providing support to some members of the US Congress, the ones who, who are gonna demand some answers from Herr Fauci. Yeah. It's quite a book from what I've seen. I, I, it's, I'm blown away by this stuff, and it's all supported by, uh, like I said, by emails and documents. It's not just hearsay. Anyways, Philo, where should we begin? Uh, I, I saw something, and I, but I can't verify it, so I'm not going to say that it's true, but I saw something. It looked like some sort of a book, Yeah. and, and it, said, it was by Klaus Schwab, and on the front of this book, it said God is dead, and the WEF, the World uh, Economic Federation, yep, will forum. soon have, oh, what did he call it? Will soon have some sort of powers, oh, divine powers. Yeah. Now, yeah. I saw it. I don't know if I can't verify it, but I saw it. Oh, well, Klaus Schwab is full of nuggets. Uh, he's, uh, he's infiltrated the Can Canada's government? All, everywhere. Yep. Everywhere. And the hedge funds and everything else. It's crazy i mean this guy's off the hook and uh him and bill gates uh and this gavi thing and all the rest of them man uh uh yeah right unelected all unelected bureaucrats is just what we need right oh yeah sure but they're, they're so useless that we've got to have more of them yeah yeah oh and uh, the biden had his little get together because they passed a law that did uh uh, for gay marriage, which has been legal for 10 years, and uh, interracial marriage, uh, which has been <laughs> legal since 1965. Something, yeah, with the, wasn't it the Civil Rights Act that, that Johnson got put through? Didn't uh, it? Well, it, I thought it was the, well, in the birth control. I think that was Griswold. Uh, but the, the interracial marriage thing was a Supreme Court decision, Loving versus Virginia, that went back to the 50s. Yeah, but the Civil Rights Act took, I mean, took care of the, what was left over. Oh, it, sure. All of this. But they had to pass a law in case the Supreme Court would, uh, like, outlaw gay marriage or the Supreme, they were, they were worried the Supreme Court was going to outlaw interracial marriage. It's like, what are you kidding me? I tisk, mean, tisk, Clarence tisk. Thomas wrote an op-ed saying that, you know, because of the, the, uh, the Roe v. Wade, 
that they would bring certain stuff like that could come to light theoretically it won't it never excuse me never would but because of one op-ed oh they got to pass this law and now biden has these uh he had some drag queens prancing around and and uh he was going on about uh kitties being being able to be mutilated uh by gender affirming stuff okay wait a minute if if uh gender of gender dysphoria is a mental disease right or a mental mental illness yeah mental illness or well, you don't even have to call it that a a syndrome or a whatever we don't do this we don't affirm we don't affirm giving booze to alcoholics okay we don't affirm what? doing liposuction uh, on uh, on anorexics okay wow why would we do it for children you know what I mean? Call me crazy, and I ain't no doctor. I'm just asking the questions. You're crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Call me a cab. Okay, you're a cab. Remember when Chuck Barris used to do that? He's yeah. Like, Call me crazy, and everybody yelled like crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> well, according to uh, these statistics that I ran across, I didn't write down, I didn't cite them, but there's uh, been a 4,000% increase in... Uh, Dys, uh, dysphoria, gender dysphoria in the past 10 years. 4,000% in 10 years. And now, once you got a kid in school who, who thinks it's cool, uh, the front page of the Burlington Free Press. Oh, yeah, that rag. Today. Yeah, that rag, huh? Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, the front page today was about uh, the this, we have a transsexual uh, whatever, uh, what do you call them? Uh, state representative, and and that the tranny brought in this kid, uh, uh, the the kid who who caused the fuss with the locker room, because <clears throat> he was a boy in the girls' locker room and he was ogling the girls supposedly, and uh, so he got kicked out or some damn thing, but anyways. It's it, it was on the front page. Of course, I can't find it uh, when I need it. But anyways, uh, it was saying that this this kid to uh, hang in there. Of course, you know the kid's going through problems. The thing is, is like <clears throat> if the parent, I don't know, I don't know if the parents want to okay surgery for the kid. We got a lot of regretters out there. I'm not even going to go there. And not only that, but who's going to pay for it? Oh well, Medicaid. Of course, really? if you can't afford it, Philo, you get Medicaid to cover it. Really? Oh, yeah. It's not that easy to get med. Well, here's, it is here in Vermont. Oh, yeah. Some places it's not easy to get Medicaid. Well, all the, all the blue states, it's wicked easy. Yeah. So roughly half the states in the country. Yeah, oh, and this, this guy that they, traded, uh, that they traded the, what is it, the basketball player for. Oh, yeah, Igor Suchakorskov. Yeah, here it is, right here. Look at this. This kills me. <clears throat> WNBA front page. WNBA star Griner freed in exchange for Russian arms dealer. And I'm thinking, WNBA, what, is, is that a radio station or something? WNBA. Nobody, yeah. watches, nobody watches it. Uh, yeah. They wonder why they, why, why they don't make the same amount of pay. is because nobody watches it. And Yeah, and you know what most of the, the money that the players get? Is comes from sports memorabilia. In other words, T-shirts, game shirts, advertising, things like that. That's where the players make the big money, and nobody's buying their st the women's stuff. Yeah, it doesn't, go it figure. Doesn't generate it doesn't generate the revenue. It's propor It's all proportional to the revenue. That's yeah. exactly. It's by <clears throat> Philo's a sports head. <clears throat> Excuse me, me. I don't know. One, I've been watching football lately. Uh, I saw the Dolphins. Uh, the, the, I mean the uh, the Tampa Bay get slammed Sunday. Oh boy, did they ever! Tom oh. Terrific really got put to him. He had Horrible. a lot of yards, but he couldn't score. And on the same page, Philo, Congress yeah. protects same-sex marriage. Now that was a very cunning stunt. <laughs> Yeah. Did you, do you Let's remember? The, do you remember the Metallica album? 
Uh, no. A bunch of cunning runts. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. That's an old one. I don't remember what year that was from. It was a long time ago. By Mary Claire Jelonic, or Jalopy as I call her. The House gave final approval Thursday to legislation protecting same-sex marriages, a monumental step in a decades-long battle for nationwide recognition of such unions that reflects a stunning turnaround in societal attitudes. Biden is expected to promptly sign the measure, which requires all states to recognize same-sex marriages. Like I said over and over again, every marriage is a same-sex marriage. If you don't have the same sex with the same person you're married to, you're not going to be married very long. Nope. And uh, a relief, a relief, oh, thank God, for hundreds of thousands of couples who've married since the Supreme Court uh 2015 decision that legalized it nationwide Ugh! so why did you need the law then if it's legal nationwide you know, the bipartisan you know, blah, 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 they have, blah, they have, blah, have, blah, have more useless stuff to talk about steve they can't oh, yeah. do their job so they got to do all this useless crap now here we are Never have been negotiating clarify that the legislation does not affect the rights of private individuals or businesses that are already enshrined in current law. The amended bill would make clear their marriages between two people an effort to ward off some far right criticism that it could endorse polygamy like the Mormons. Yes. Hey, did you know, Steve, <laughs> that the Romans thought that the Christians were atheists because they only worshipped one God? <laughs> <laughs> In the end, several religious groups, including the, including the Church of Latter-day Stinks, uh, came out in support of the bill. The Mormons said it would support the rights for Samson as long as they didn't infringe on the religious group's right to believe as they choose. Uh, let's see. Thursday's vote came as the LGBTQRU123C3PO community has faced violent attacks, such as the shooting this month at a gay nightclub in Colorado that killed five and injured 17. Yeah, which was done by a non-binary freak, uh, you know. T but they don't mention that. They don't mention it was one of them. It wasn't some far right guy. It was a far lefty non-binary. Oh, yeah. We've been through a lot, said Kelly Robinson. Well, here we are. They wanted to keep the, they wanted to make sure that the people's religious things are okay, all right? Like there's a case now before the Supreme Court where a woman didn't want to design a website for gay, uh, gay couples. <clears throat> now, if they went in there and asked her to design a website and they didn't say they were gay and they didn't, you know, she would have done it. I mean, so what, what's, where does it end? Uh, do you have the right to go to, uh, to, go to a, a caterer, a Muslim caterer, and demand that the Muslim caterer do a pig roast for you? Or alcohol. Yeah, <laughs> with an open bar. You know what I mean? Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Allahu Akbar, open bar, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Steve, this is too much. <laughs> yeah, where does it end, man? Yes, where does the Akbar end? I'm not sure. And here we are. Family of Wheeland backs the Griner deal. And uh, this is a lie. This was not a choice of which American to bring home. The choice was one or none, uh, wink and blink and a nod said. I wholeheartedly wish that we could have brought Paul home today on the same plane as Brittany. Well, no, because according to NBC, which they promptly scrubbed, Vilo, NBC's Andrea Mitchell reported that they had a choice between Griner and the, and the, the spy guy and that they picked uh, the, the, the Griner. And, uh, and, and later on that day, uh, I guess somebody at the White House read it and they said, whoa, 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 you know, no, 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 you can't report that. I don't care who told you it. And if they were on the record, it was sourced by somebody on the record, supposedly. And then bang, within an, uh, two or three hours, NBC mysteriously scrubbed the report like they did with the Paul Pelosi thing in San Francisco. Not only did they scrub the report on that, but they fired, they disappeared the reporter. Nobody's seen him since. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no problem there. Oh, and speaking of which, this Victor Bout guy, you know this uh, horrible arms dealer, Philo? 
Well, I think I mentioned this to you uh, privately. I don't know if we covered it on the show. Is it Boris Badenov? Yeah, Boris Badenov, Victor Boot. Uh, <laughs> he did a th over a thousand missions in Iraq for us mm -hmm. during the early days of the war. Mm -hmm. He I traded don't... everything from small arms to gasoline to God knows what under the radar because you know stuff that even Halliburton wasn't allowed to like touch. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I saw a good parody on Facebook. Once in a while, Facebook, I'll tell you, they'll come up with some funny stuff, and it showed a parody of the Russian arm dealer and a, and and Brittany Griner. Uh, yeah, Brittany Griner. He says they traded you for me. He says, "Are you a terrorist? Have you done this and this?" No, I'm just a basketball player, a, a woman's basketball player. He says, "I'm going back. I should be traded for it better than this." <laughs> yeah. Damn it! I deserve better than this. I wish that I, I could have sent it to you, Steve. You'd have laughed like crazy. Anyways, yeah. It, so, so he did over a thousand missions for the USA, supposedly, and uh, worth over sixty million dollars, Philo. Oh sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that came from uh, what's his name. Uh, uh, Pasobo, uh, uh, Jack Pasobiak, or whatever his name is. He's a former Intel guy. Oh, yeah. Okay. No problem, man. But, you know, he's you're one of us until you're not. It's like uh, President Diem. Remember him in, uh, in South Vietnam, Philo? Oh, yes. They, see, they, what they don't know is they don't know if Kennedy knew that he was going to be whacked or if Kennedy knew that there was going to be a coup. Because they were blaming all these Buddhist guys lighting themselves on fire and stuff on the Diem administration, which were Catholics. Uh, they were holdovers from the French colonial days. So they wanted to get rid of Diem because we wanted somebody our CIA could work with, if you know what I mean, right? So they, uh, he was supposed to get a ride to the airport and be flown out of town with, you know, with, with a, uh, what do you call it, the uh, Shah of Iran deal where you load up your gold or, you know, I mailed a Marco shoe collection, and you hop on the plane and you go to some third world country of your choice. Well, <laughs> I guess something, I don't know what happened, but on the way to the airport, uh, they wound, Jem wound up being brutally murdered along with his wife and his brother and some other people, right? Yeah, I, I, know, I didn't know how he died, but I, I heard they, his own people assassinated him. Yeah, his own people, if you know what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess JFK heard about it. He wasn't happy because uh, just even before all this stuff in the Bay of Pigs, he had threatened to smash the CIA into a thousand pieces and scatter it to the wind. And lo and behold, what was it, 22 days later, 20 days later, JFK himself gets whacked. Yes, it was that Italian rifle. Yeah, the lone gunman. The one that, <laughs> the one that, that, that couldn't hit a cow's arse with a frying pan. And they're oh, saying yeah. that he hit Kennedy three times from that distance with that weapon. And one of the things, one of the things that uh, the, the best thing about oh, they're freaking out uh, about this Twitter thing, but yet they won't report on it. There's nothing in any of these papers the whole week. We've had three dumps of, of Twitter stuff showing collusion. I told you, I I showed you that last week. For those, wow. Well, for those of you, we didn't get on last week because uh, YouTube wouldn't put it up. There's an article in here. This is the closest thing to come to the Twitter revelations. But Rumble did. Yeah. Everybody go to Rumble and watch Steve's show last week. It was good. Last week. I don't know. It was a good show, but not a great one. Not as good as this week's. Uh, but anyways, there it is right in the corner. And it says, thanks, Philo. Trump in, a, in post suspend parts of the Constitution. He was joking, but of course, because he says something outrageous, the, the freaking lefties, the anti-Trumpers go freaking out like, rah, he said suspend the Constitution. It's like, yeah, well, the, you know, come on. What do you expect from Don Rickles for crying out loud? <laughs> He's President Don Rickles. Teddy Roosevelt and Andrew Jackson would have punked you too, you fools. You get your feathers all ruffled every time he makes a joke. But anyways, this is the closest thing to reporting. Way back at the bottom of the article, it says, uh, Trump's comments came after Twitter's new owner, Elon Musk, said he'd reveal how Twitter engaged in free speech suppression, in quotes, uh, leading up to the 2020 election. But files released Friday, which focused on the tech company's confused response to a story about Hunter Biden, 
Do not show Democrats trying to limit the story. That's exactly what they show. It's not just the Democrats, it's the whole deep state. They, they do not want Trump. They don't want any outsiders. They select who goes in, who goes out. We're finding out this, uh, we're finding out now, right here, that they meddled with the election in, in, in Maricopa in Arizona. And Carrie Lake is suing them, God bless her, because they certified an election by arm twisting, threatening to throw a supervisor in jail on a felony. Anyways, this is from Gateway Pundit. It turns out that CISA, now this, these guys are as bad or worse than any of the other alphabet in, intel agencies because, uh, because they're run under the Department of Fossil Land Security, okay? Oh, yes. Now, something that came out of the Patriot Act, which we, shouldn't have ever been renewed. And you know what, Steve? We haven't learned a damn thing. No, no. It. Nope. No, we have mandates, mandates, mandates. Do as you're told, do as you're told. Well, we're learning more about how they're clamping down, how they use Twitter. Facebook and Google and the rest of them are all making so much money, they don't want to even mention it. But Musk has the sack to come in and say, hey, look, I'm going to show you what's really going on here. Isn't it funny how, how Twitter was losing so much money? And Eight yet, million a day. And they fired all these people and nothing has changed. Well, he's going to get, uh, he's got to advertise, and I swear to God, Philo, he's talking about $8 a month for a blue check. I, I'll tell you what, I don't even go on Twitter, but I will open a Twitter account myself for 8 bucks a month just to get the blue check and to help out old Muskie. <laughs> I'm not on it either. I have no use for it. Well, I like it because you can, some, uh, a lot of times, uh, the people who are putting out tweets read the responses. And they even reply to them and stuff. So you never know, you know? Yeah. Anyways, it turns out that the cyber... From Gateway Pundit again, one of the great news agencies. It turns out that the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA, so now they're going with four letters instead of uh, FBI, KGB, and CIA, yeah. has been colluding <clears throat> with Maricopa County officials to censor information they disagreed with surrounding the elections in Arizona. Oh, okay. Nothing like putting your thumb, you never mind your thumb, putting your whole hand on the scale, right, Philo? Absolutely. Yep. And then they, then they, uh, they, they shut down the machines. Uh, well, they didn't shut them down, but only 30%, 40% of them uh, uh, didn't, didn't work. And so you had people lined up around the block, and they'd tell them, well, go vote in another precinct. And they'd go to vote in another precinct. Now, these are all in uh, conservative communities, right? Uh, predominantly conservative communities. So they'd go to another precinct, and they'd say, no, you can't vote here, but just put it in uh, box number three, and we, we'll get to it, right? And next thing you know, supposedly, Carrie Lake loses by 17,000 votes. I don't think so. Anyways, you can read her lawsuit at... Um, uh, their lawsuit. I, I got to dig it up. I I didn't want to print it because there's not enough room in the damn day. Uh, anyways, if you go to carrylake.com, uh, there should be a link to it. And uh, damn it, I know I wrote it. Oh, here it is. Sorry, wrong, wrong, wrong file. Uh, the Electoral Count Act, yada, yada, yada. Carrie Lake, Carrie Lake. Uh, <clears throat> www.savearizonafund.com. You can read the 70 page lawsuit there where the, she's got tons of evidence, depositions, pictures, everything to bring to the court to say this election was bogus as it was. Now, could you imagine, Philo, if these polls were in a predominantly black Democratic uh, precincts and people weren't allowed to vote? Could you imagine what would happen, the, new, the, the coverage it would be getting on all the networks? Absolutely. But no, because it's mostly white people and conservative white people, there's no coverage at all. SaveArizonaFund.com. Anyways, Maricopa County Recorder Stephen Richter actually met with CISA 
to get their help on fighting information that was coming out about the 2020 election. It goes back, way back. Richter even suggested that government agencies should collude with media outlets like Fox and CNN with boot camps, as he called them. Huh. Okay. Well, geez, I'm two sides, no wonder. Previously, Richter tweeted that the electronic tab and voter registration info played a role in the biggest cybersecurity threat to our elections. In the 22 elections, voting machine failures over 30% of polling locations in Maricopa County left voters disenfranchised and unable to vote. According to the report, he suggested Cecil hold boot camps for Fox, yada, yada. It may explain why they refused to allow the Gateway Pundit to, uh, to attend the uh, press conferences. They kept out Gateway Pundit. They kept out any media that was uh, not deemed friendly, Philo. Of course. Where do, uh, what does that sound familiar? Like like what? the governor's COVID conferences in Vermont? Oh, yeah. Uh, that, that was such a... Uh... That was such a kangaroo court, it wasn't funny. They I was the only unfriendly reporter there who I was always polite, very respectful. I did my homework, and I got, I was the bounced. I got bounced. First, they put me and Guy Page at the end of the friggin' uh, conferences, but all that did was make people wait through the whole thing so that they could watch our questions. And then when that didn't work, uh, they finally bounced yours truly, and they left Guy Page. But fortunately, the COVID baloney was almost over by then. Yeah, but the yeah. thing of it was, Steve, they, they accused you of one thing, and when they realized they were wrong, they had to do something else. Yeah, accused me of racism. Racism. And, and when they couldn't make that stick, what did they do? They said, oh, he's not a reporter. He's got oh, an entertainment show. Hobby news, yeah. yeah. And so that shows you how bogus they are. You think you think people like Philo or Todd or anybody else in here would, would would do the stuff that they do for me in this show if I was a racist? You know, no. sure. All right, if I was a racist and I was a Nazi and I wanted to do a Nazi show, I they I could come in, I could use the studio, but they he wouldn't go out of his way to help with cuts and adding music and doing all this stuff because nobody likes racists. And for them to accuse me of being a racist, what are you kidding me? The best teacher I had in trade school was black. My boss after school was black. I've dealt with work with more black people than half these crackers in Vermont ever have. And because I was a machinist doing stuff like this, the only thing that mattered was whether you could do your job or not. Yes, you had tolerances, and if you hit them, that was it. You were, you, you, you were okay. You could do it or you couldn't. You're out the door. Yep. That simple. Yep. That's of course, right. everybody has a bad run now and then. I broke up with my girlfriend one one time. I made junk for a week. <laughs> Guess what happened when my ex-wife left me? My my drinking cut down to almost nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. And that's it, not. I'm not making that up. That actually happened. I didn't see it right off, but it, it, as time went on, I said, "Geez, I'm not drinking anywhere near as heavy as I was." At any rate. Yeah, so uh, so anyways, uh, where were we? However, the Gateway Pundit recently reported that the Ninth Circuit Court granted an emergency injunction and ordered Maricopa to issue a press pass to them. After the election, of course, this was December 7th. It was a huge win for the First Amendment. Gateway also reported that Kerry Hobbs asked Twitter to silence uh, Katie Hobbs, the supposed winner, she was the Secretary of State. She wouldn't recuse herself from, you know, running the elections that she was running in. Uh, she'd asked Twitter to silence her critics on top of running her own election and threatening to jail supervisors if they didn't certify her corrupt election win. Hmm. Carrie Lake's Twitter page, still being censored, likely to prevent lawsuits and info about the rigged 22 election from being shared. Anyways. CISA, Gateway Pundit, uh, gatewaypundit.com. Um, it is unbelievable. Okay, we don't have much more time for that one. You have about five minutes. Uh, that's all? Yep. Holy moly. Yeah, here they are here. Behind Twitter censorship or Hunter Biden's laptop study. This is from the Epic Times. Like I told you, the CISA people are unbelievable. They are the new censors. And it turned out that they Twitter started working with these people 
when Trump was still president, they were undermining him. They, they, they tried to screw up his campaign after, you know, when he became the nominee. They, tried, they lied. They, they falsified documents and search warrants. And, and then in the, in the campaign, uh, and then when he was a, a president, they dragged their heels, wouldn't do squat. Finally, when he gets the economy ripping, we're uh, the world's leader in production of petroleum products and energy. Uh, gas is like a buck ninety-nine, $2.10 a gallon. People, the economy's ripping, people are happy. Unemployment low. It's like, bang, out of the blue comes this COVID thing. Huh. Yep, and guess who started it? They kept trying to blame it. On when I get, the, I'll have to do a book report on this book. Here we are. Yeah. Hey, that's a good idea. Why don't you do that? Here we are. Open contradiction. Look at this. On one side, it said rural voters are leery of Biden and climate change. Uh, they talk about the drought, and then right next to it, it says up to four feet of snow forecast in the Sierras. It's like they're getting dumped with snow. I mean, they get 12, 15, sometimes 20 feet of snow in the Sierras a, a year. It's like, it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. And so they asked the man on the street stuff, right? <clears throat> oh boy. Uh, about half of voters nationwide approve of the president's handling despite the passage of the Inflation Production Act. Uh, some are meant a historic, uh, a historic investment. Yeah, right. Oh, well, this isn't the one, but one of the people they asked about this stuff. Oh, here we are. Uh, views on Biden economy remain sour. Glenn McDaniel, a 70-year-old medical research scientist from Atlanta who twice voted for Warlock, thinks Biden has weathered the storm, as, uh, econ storm, as well as possible. Wait a minute. A research scientist in Atlanta. Huh. Who's the biggest scientific uh, outfit in Atlanta, Philo? CNN. <laughs> well, yeah, the two. <laughs> CDC. Yeah, right. The CDC is headquartered in Atlanta. So, of course, the scientist is going to go with Biden, especially if he opens his yap in the papers because his job would be, <laughs> his job might be threatened. Do not ever trust the CDC. Uh, not anymore. No. You can't anymore. You can't. Since, well, I remember when they, when they told women to not breastfeed, the formula was better. And it's crazy. So it's an open contradiction. First, they say... Uh, uh, they say that uh, 20, 27% of urban Republicans approve, 14% of small towns say the same. <clears throat> but wait a minute. Earlier, they said 6 in 10 uh, voters, ur city voters approve, so that's 60%. The figure drops uh, to about half, or roughly 4 in 10 for rural, so that's 40%. But yet, in the next paragraph, they say only 14% of small town and rural Republicans say the same. So is it 40% or is it 14%? You know Some, what I mean? Somewhere's around there. We, you know, and, we don't know. Somewhere's. And I'm not a math whiz. <laughs> and here we are. Hospitalization signal rising risk for seniors for COVID. Well, wait a minute. Just because it doesn't work doesn't mean it's not a failure, right, Philo? Jeez. It, it's it's been, crazy. The Listen whole to this. It's been a social experiment, Steve. COVID 19 infections don't mean the vaccine has failed. No. What? No. Well, if they're all getting, if they're all vaccinated, and they're all getting COVID, and a lot of them are dying, uh, how can that be judged a success? Well, we have variants. Yo, oh, yeah. By it, the it, way, last but not least, who are you gonna believe us? Uh, us, your lion eyes, are last but not least. Oh my God, we've eaten up a whole hour. Here we are. <clears throat> Zelensky is Times Person of the Year. Person of the Year. Get this, person of the year, there's no opposition TV, no opposition radio allowed, uh, and, and uh, no opposition newspapers allowed, and now he's, he, he's canceled the church. He's canceled the church, but he's man of the year, and we're going to fight for Ukraine's freedom. Get this. He said that there would be personal, economic, and political sanctions on practicing religion in unapproved ways. Yes, I know. The same baloney. Anyways. Yeah, let's send him some more money, shall we? Of course. 
Anyways, once again, I hope you enjoy the clips. Philo liked them. Uh, hopefully we'll see you again next week, Imshallah. Good Lord will and the creek don't rise. And uh, until then, get down on your hands and knees in the men-only moss. Sniff the bum of the guy in the man dress in front of you. Head east, worship the rock, meteorite in Mecca, and say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu open bar! At the pork roast. <laughs> and a happy Deus Magnus Est to everyone. <laughs> open bar. That white people are committed to being villains in the aggregate, right? The thing I want to say to you is this we got to take professor. these out. There is a world beyond even our sojourn on the earth. And so whiteness is going to have an end date because it, it is not, despite what white people think of themselves, they do not defy the laws of eternity, right? And what? that's the thing that white people don't trust us to do because they are so corrupt. You know, their thinking is so morally and spiritually bankrupt about power i got griner just and i only had to give up one guy for it <laughs> one guy i mean lord of war merchant of death those are just nicknames he's a cream puff and uh i did better than obama remember that bergdahl trade he had to give up the whole isis all-star team mm. and what did britney do anyway what'd she do travel with a little bit of hemp hemp is very american uh Hey, I bet you didn't know. Declaration of Independence was written with a vape pen. <laughs> True story! This is Jerome Grodin. He was standing outside in front of the bus terminal, poking people with this thing. I, I was just trying to get their attention. What for? To, to, to save them. It all started last year. The worst winter on record. And people refused to be aware. Aware of what? It's the beginning of the next great ice age. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you have a CD, you can give me a statement. You're coming ice age. It's climate change. The, 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 the change of the climates, the, the, the shifting of the axis. Change of the climate. The cooling of the oceans. You put all of that in the state. Name, your address, yeah. which oceans are cooling. <laughs> Did you know that the perimeter of the polar ice cap has been increasing at a rate of 46 feet per year since 1900? Yes, I did. <laughs> to hear that my stilettos click on those marble floors and yet know that I deserve to be in that room just as much as anybody else. Case in point, as you pointed out, the this stunning is crazy. At the southern border, as captured We've by got our Fox five to six million people Russia. now. The More than the population the of Ireland in, fact, in two years. Of the Border Patrol reporting that over 16,000 people all have getting government benefit as soon as they arrive. The last 48 hours, an average of 8,000 people every single day. And with 5,000 migrants already in custody in the city of El Paso, well, they've done what they think they should do, which is begin a mass street yeah, release. They're all lighting of fires. Great. The Border Patrol is so overwhelmed. Oh. Let me take you inside the numbers. They are absolutely the climate staggering. change, anti pollution people. Which was a bit of a rise, frankly, compared to, say, 2017, when the numbers were right around 300,000. Look at the From under half a million and 2022 to almost two and a half million. million. But to hear the White House tell uh, no problem. there's not much to fret over because they've got a plan. Right. So the team has been working very hard to ensure that uh, we sure have, have steps to, be able boy. to manage the expiration of Title 42 and to put in place a process that will be orderly. The hack made. left over and from Obama's administration. So we can protect our national security concerns. Sure, we can. The way you view it is okay, what are the benefits and what are the drawbacks? And it seems like our medical establishment never wanted to be honest with people uh, about the potential drawbacks. And so you showed a clip yes, from Dr. Thanks. Latipo down here in Florida in the analysis that he's done with people, particularly young men, who've taken the mRNA shots. We, of course, had witnesses talk about their experience. And how are we in a situation? Yes, Florida, we banned vaccine passports almost two years ago. We banned uh, the shot mandates for jobs and saved a lot of people's jobs. Nevertheless, throughout our country, you still have hundreds of universities in other states that are still mandating these boosters on these college kids. 
when any type of cost-benefit analysis would say the benefit from them taking the shot, as you, as you alluded to, it doesn't prevent them from getting infected or spreading it anyways. The benefit is minuscule, uh, but as Joe Latipo and other studies have shown, you know, there is a risk for doing it. So yeah. why can't our medical establishment acknowledge that? Why the deception? Why have they continued to do this for two years? Please hand it over We'll beat you up So don't make it some noise 